the Terrible Warriors have teamed up with the Dungeons and Do-Gooders to stream on Twitch every Tuesdays in what we're calling Tabletop Tuesdays. Every week, a new one-shot RPG. Every week, a new special guest at our table. Come join us, twitch.tv slash dndggames, every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Today, on The Terrible Warriors. Blue, Blue, where are you? En route to their vague destination on Flight 191, the trio of Aiden, Autumn, and Blue have been separated. Where has Blue gone to? Where has their plane itself gone to? As the storms outside grow louder, the mystery inside grows deeper. We'll be starting our descent soon, so make sure your seatbelts are fastened and the meal tray is in the upright position. This is part five. Prepare to land. We are back. This lovely white plane moving through these dark clouds, thunder and lightning surrounding it, uh, weaving in between these very tall, dark structures, uh, which can only be glimpsed through the window, shadows as they are. Amidst these shadows, we see a woman, blonde hair, She is bending down over another person. Sweat dripping from her face onto the sheets. She raises her head and stares at Blue. Green eyes smiling as she wipes the sweat from her brow and lays beside you. Do I recognize her? Yeah, it's your wife. Oh, my wife. Is this room somewhere I, I remember? I mean, you're... Our bedroom? No, you're, you're in... In the airplane, this is your uh, your room. Heading off to uh, Ireland uh, for a castle getaway. Uh, your kid is being currently watched by uh, one of the airplane attendants. You know, showing them the captain's area and the different things flight attendants do to keep everyone sane. It was cute, and your your daughter was very interested in it since she wants to be a pilot when she grows up. I'm going to touch her face. I want to smooth back her hair and like just look at her. She's pale with freckles. Um, kind of these dark emerald eyes with kind of twinkles of brown in them. Her hair is blonde, uh, shiny with curls at the end of it. It's currently matted and she has like this mischievous smile on her face uh, as you touch her face and move the hair out. Are we both naked? Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm going to lean forward and kiss her. Blue's going to lean forward and kiss her. Yeah, it, it's, it tastes like uh, honeysuckle. And you put your lips upon that flower and, and suck that little bit of honey from the, the end of it. Uh, it's very much like that. You kind of feel a little bit of pain as she bites the side of your lip. I'm going to reach down to my own stomach and touch the scar that's there. Is it still there? Yeah, it is. I have a daughter. Do I remember how she came into this world in any way? It's kind of fuzzy, uh, but you can push to try to find that memory. I'm going to push. All right. Let's go ahead. What kind of roll is this? 
Let's do a keep it together. So willpower. Oh, uh, nine. One d ten, right? Two d two d tens. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you did really well for one die. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's really good. Um, I mean, it's a horrific experience. Um, the whole adoption process. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of you know back and forth, but. You can remember the first time you saw your daughter. Blue eyes, uh, this dark-skinned little girl wearing this um, blue dress in the adoption house. Uh, Kids were playing with toy trucks, uh, and she was just sitting there playing with a few dolls. Um, One of them uh, kind of looks vaguely familiar, uh, but you can't quite can't quite uh, put your tongue on it or your finger Um, but yeah it was just something about her eyes it was like looking into the ocean and wondering how far down it goes okay do I have names for anyone here do I remember my wife my daughter if I think about it if I want to say her name to her my wife yeah what's the first name that comes to your mind Julia. Julia. I want to have sex. Blue's never had sex before. In her... No, she has, but she hasn't. She's going to start kissing her and trying to caress her and get it on. Because I think we've been having sex. Yeah. And I just, for some reason, can't remember exactly what it was like. Yeah, no, you, you definitely, like... You have... You feel it. Um, and if this is a new experience for you, it's like your skin is on fire. Each little hair is on your arms and legs, kind of like standing up at attention. Um, you feel just your thighs have that like almost ticklish feeling uh, from where she kissed you uh, just a few moments ago. And you start kissing her and, you know, you feel the passion starting to build and she is up for this declaration. Um, Julia, I want to fuck. <laughs> I just want to bang, Julia. Episode 5, Mile High Club. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> oh, the names don't stop coming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and it's it's fantastic. Okay. It's like the first time you've ever had sex. Except you're coming at it with almost like this instinctual movement that you know the right things to do. uh, Mm -hmm. Where to kiss, where to place your fingers um, to elicit those moans and groans from Julia uh, that make her back arch forward towards you. Her whole body is has surrendered to you underneath uh, this blanket that kind of covers you both uh, in this dimly lit room. Man, I'm just like Boo is going to spend all her time. She's just like categorizing Julia's body and all the way it's like different from hers. She's going to like touch her breasts. Are they they're bigger than blues i assume because blue is so small and yeah like just observing that maybe that she has fat on her like most normal people would oh yeah um, definitely julia julia like you know she she has a nine to five desk job she tries to work out every now and then but honestly doritos are just so much more tastier and so much more rewarding than an hour uh running amazing um, like someone blue can like grab so that's what she's doing she's like feeling grabbing like post sex this is just like it's strange it's new this is like so different she's also like this feels like the first time she's really like touched someone even though she knows she's had her wife for so long they have a kid together it's strange 
Yeah, you, you um, kind of like you understand that this is this whole trip uh, is five years uh, anniversary. Okay, you can kind of years. you can kind of see the two rings uh, on mm-hmm. the uh, nightstand next to you. It won't be on your finger because your fingers have been uh, exploring each other very thoroughly. <laughs> um, you want to risk any? <laughs> Yeah, you wounds. Yeah, or, or losing it. <laughs> oh my goodness! But yeah, uh, she uh, she she's beautiful in that way that um, years ha- has given way to beauty. Like you mm-hmm. remember her when you first met her. Like uh, she was more toned. She had you know makeup on and everything, but. Mm-hmm. Despite, like, the objective understanding that, to most people, she was more gorgeous five years ago, you see her, you know, uh, with with fat uh, kind of on her sides, but beautiful, oh my god, you can touch and feel, and it's just, it's so much of her that you adore uh, every little like uh, scratch or scar on her body you you know you're familiar with her lips her her eyes that kind of smile she always gets um, the way her hair just kind of tends to fall over her left eye every now and then uh, and she blows on it to, to push it out of her way and then sometimes your fingers there to, to take it out it's it's the attractiveness that only comes with love uh, and love enduring. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Blue's gonna like place her hand on on her cheek. Julia, I'm so happy. That that's good. Um, I I'm happy too. I'm I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad this is this is working out so well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean We've been together five years. We've been together five years. We've been together five years. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. I five years, that's so we have a daughter. I'm so I I didn't think this would I'm just so happy to see you here. I don't know. So you're gonna kiss her again, but it's gonna be like a just sort of like you're still here, right? Yeah. You yeah. are just like a press of like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she she smiles and, and puts her, her ring back on. Mm-hmm. I I didn't think we were gonna make it this year. Um, but I'm glad you took some time off and um decided to, to come on this trip with us. No, oh my You should never you should never feel that way. Of course I would make it work. I don't uh, uh, You're the best thing I've ever seen. Uh uh she's going to get up and put on her wedding ring too. Uh, yeah. First thing and say I'm I'm so sorry if I ever I've I don't know what would have that's ridiculous. I don't. Do I have any specific memories of like why things aren't working out, or I'm just I know that it's true what you say. Roll, uh, roll willpower. I'm ruining my own marriage in the game. Twelve. Uh, so you're gonna lose uh one stability. Um, you're kind of looking back. Does that mean you're, you're healing stability or you're? You're, you're taking damage, yeah. yeah, yeah so I'm so irrational so right now, just for your knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing well. <laughs> wow, you're already down into that. Because I can't get over distress. Yeah. I can't get better than distressed, mm-hmm. so just I lost a few oh, last dang. game. And yeah, now I'm just she, sinking She into- comes to us broken, and, and, <laughs> and this I, campaign will continue to do its worth. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not a good role for me. <laughs> it's great. Um... Okay, sorry. Did I interrupt yeah. you? No, no, you're fine. You, It's a hard memory to swallow. Like, it is tough. Mm-hmm. You remember your wife. You had just gotten home from work. Your wife was looking in the mirror as you were tired. You had a long day. She was staring at herself, kind of clutching 
uh, her stomach uh, in that way that you do kind of reminiscing about the good old days. And you said, stop looking at yourself, you fat cow. And you went to bed on that. But yeah, but you could hear her silent sobs in that bathroom. And the difficult part was it helped you sleep. (laughs) Julia, I'm sorry. That's not. I shouldn't have been like that. That's. I'm fucked up. I don't know. I'm really glad we're here, though. Me, me too. Um, I, I love you, and I'll always love you. And I don't. That, that's not going to change, no matter what happens. And I know your job's stressful and what you do is so important. Uh, but I hope to be more than just a, uh, a side character to your life. Of course. No, you, I love you too. You're the most amazing, important thing. You are you can never be a side character. How, how, when you're like this, you're amazing. Look at you, just... Perfect. <sighs> Is Boosie here close somewhere? She's gonna get up and get dressed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's gonna get up and get dressed. We should go get Jamie, our daughter. We should go get her. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab her hand and make sure she's following me and head out of the cabin. Excellent. Uh, so we're going to go over to uh, Autumn and Aiden. Uh, Why are you looking and- at me like this, Autumn? I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> There's a flight attendant who has approached you. I Autumn is so distressed that Blue is just missing from the cabin. Um, and she doesn't answer uh, Aiden. She's just like shooting daggers with her eyes and she ch- Oh excellent. Now I get to deal with the silent treatment again. And she's going to turn to the flight attendant and say have you seen um and and she gives a description of blue. Uh I guess blue's kind of smaller and what color is blue? Gray. Hair? Brown. <laughs> Salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> like mousy brown she has brown hair and like mousy brown hair and her eyes are like this and she's like this tall and she was in our cabin um and i'm kind of worried about her because she hasn't been feeling very well can you help us find her please she's very frail uh yeah actually that's why i came here um it seems like she's having some sort of episode um wait you know where she is yes Take us there. Okay. Uh, And she'll kind of lead you guys downstairs uh, where you see Blue uh, has her hand uh, on this this older woman, uh, blonde and and looking very confused um, and, and kind of screaming, like, let me, let go of me. You see that Blue's like, clutching uh, this woman uh, May I observe a situation real quickly as we walk into this room? Yeah, of course. I, uh... Oh, I rolled a 9 and a 10. Plus my perception. Like, I basically rolled perfect. everything. uh, And my perception is plus 1, so I just... Uh, I just rolled a 20. Um, Yeah, like... (laughs) People... Looking around, people are, like freaking out uh it looks like some of the flight attendants are holding some of the kind of white knight gentlemen mm-hmm. uh from striking blue uh yeah. this older lady looks terrified she's peed herself uh, there's a stain underneath uh on what? the carpet 
well, what's being hidden from Aiden? What's being hidden from me? As we walk in, because this is all looking like really like I want to do want to know like immediately because blue is an enigma and is my research subject and has walked out of that room without any of us and is down here having an episode. There's all this chaos happening in this room. Um, Aiden just doesn't trust, I think, Blue when things get weird, given the nature of how we found Blue in the first place. So I do want to know also what I need to be on the lookout for as I walk in, because we also haven't dealt with what's outside that window. And I'm just dealing with one thing at a time right now. And then we'll figure out where we are in the air. Because we're not where we're supposed to be. Something's wrong. And it's probably Blue's fault. And it's there, definitely Autumn's fault. There's a slight smell uh, to this place. Um, you didn't catch it when you first got down here, but now as you're kind of opening yourself up to the world around you, you smell it with clarity. It's an unusual smell, but if you could... If you had to place a name to it, you would say arousal. Why does this whole plane smell like sex? And somehow, dear listener, if I act on these answers, I'll get a plus one to my roll. <laughs> yeah! <I'm> keeping... <laughs> Okay, well, follow-up question. What seems strange about this? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that not strange? <laughs> um, I get two. I get two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so no one else is recognizing the smell. Uh, it doesn't seem like... Like, the more you smell it, the more it, it started to, like, become everything in this on this floor. But no one is saying anything about Steamy it. Steamy sex. Uh, no one's mentioning it. Is this yeah, taking just... place in 2021? Uh, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna put my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, proper pandemic COVID restrictions. Uh, uh, we are, uh, these planes get overcrowded. Must be some kind of outbreak going on. Um, I, 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 uh, <laughs> I want a double mask if I can. Um, but the implication is that <laughs> COVID smells like sex. Aiden doesn't like. Our common <laughs> reaction <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine after sex, you're like, let me, uh, let me just put this on. <laughs> this on. Oh, yeah. my right, thanks, God. baby. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> now that we fucked, it. I'm putting this like, mask on. Common <laughs> symptoms of COVID-19. <laughs> Jesus. Smells like sex. <sighs> Sorry. Okay, um... I'm, I mean, I'm gonna approach Blue. I wanna make sure they're okay. Like, I'm, not, I'm not that kind of doctor, but I do wanna, like... And, and Blue's, like, leaning over this woman, like, pinning her to the seat? No, trying to lead her out. out of oh, her drag her, her away. Her away, yeah. And, and Autumn's... Blue, it's... Am I aware of this, or am I in my little fantasy dream of taking my wife? <laughs> no, it's like, with with your friend's voices kind of echoing through the corridor, like, mm-hmm. you look back and you realize you're not clutching the hand of uh, your wife anymore, but just some random... Individual. Yeah, they're resisting uh, blue, right? Like, yeah, yeah they're, like, they're what, the, what the hell's going yeah, on? Yeah, they don't want to follow. Um, so, and- Aiden just in like a, an authoritative, like I'm, I'm, I, like I'm calling out a dog who's doing a bad trick, being like, blue, unhand her, and hoping that can just like snap out if they're if blue's having some kind of like waking dream or walking and isn't like, like snap out of it. It's gonna. Is basically what I use. I'm just, yeah. I'm blunt. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big I have, blunt. Do I have control of blue now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just the your the thing that echoes in your mind uh, with everything around you kind of dripping away into. Oh, it's like a beautiful what you dream feel. to slip right yeah. out of your head. Oh. Um, is your voice saying, "You fat cow, 
just kind of echoing in your head. Does Blue say that in the room, or is that just in Blue's head? That's just in Blue's okay. head. Oh. That was yeah. weird. Hello. You fat cow. She's oh, just, just, just getting out of the room. <laughs> Blue's going to sort of jerk at, at Aiden's call of her name. She's going to look at this woman's face, and this woman looks nothing like Julia. She's going to let her go. Autumn... Autumn will rush in there sort of upon seeing the scene and seeing this sort of break and kind of elbow everyone out of the way and push through and like kind of step between the older woman and Blue to kind of like shield Blue from the older woman and kind of will place her hands on Blue's shoulders and look Blue in the eye and say, Blue, it's okay. Blue, come on, let's go back to our cabin. You're okay. Let's go. Blue, do you know where you are? Uh... Uh, oh no. I mean, I... D- Do you know yes, who I Yes, I know who you are. The doctor, and... I know you're Aiden, I know you're Autumn, but... I had a... W- okay. Good. Do you know where you... Do you know when? Do you know the day? Um... I know the day, right? I can, like, surmise and, like, back on the plane, like, yes! Because I, I feel like, over the year... Because, Blue, you were quite catatonic when we first mm-hmm. found you. When we, when we brought you back that day the lab was destroyed. Aiden's a bastard, but he's also been, I mean, I've been researching you. I feel like this isn't necessarily the first time, at the very least, where you've been confused. Not like this, with this weird dream, but where you've just been Confused and need to place you into the world. And so it's a centering. I once stole an idea from a psychiatrist, so. Mm -hmm. She'll tell you the date. She knows what it is. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, actually the date uh, that you understand it to be um, is about five years prior to um, when you first met Aiden. Oh, oh so you, you say it's 2016. Yeah. So I give him the same day five years ago. <laughs> and uh, I think it was... I think I have a wife somewhere. I think... I think I have a wife? We'll talk about this, and we'll talk about this when we get Mm. back to our cabin. Very sorry, ma'am, sleepwalker. You know how it is with these overnight trips. I'm very bad at engaging with people, but I'm gonna try. (laughs) Ah. Yeah, uh, one of the flight attendants is like, please take her to your room. We'll send someone up there uh, once we handle this situation. Thank you very much for your accommodation. Also, when you have a moment, please stop by the room. I do want to know how the flight is going. Been getting a lot of turbulence lately as I'm like shuffling Blue down the hallway. <laughs> Don't look out the window. Has I whisper nothing. to Autumn. <laughs> Autumn has nothing to say to like anyone. She is focused on Blue. She's like, fuck all these other people. They don't matter. They're inconsequential. The perception of the masses matters, always matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they think. They're inconsequential. Someone could have been We're going filming back to our that. room. They could have been filming me. <laughs> to room. Blue is is going back, but she is like, she's there, but she's like catatonic in terms of like just like trying to process things on her own. Like she's yeah. What and you're you thinking you're, Blue, leaving the room memory, like that unattended. Your memory's no. slipping. Every second brings uh, your wife. You can't like what was her oh, name? Fuck. Julian, Julia, Jules. What are like you going to forget, Blue? It was you were having a no. Bad I think dream. I uh, it was gonna. It was a re- you had a wife. yeah. It was really you good. Had a Everything wife. was good and uh, you can write it down. Let's get back to your notebook. You can write it all down into your notebook okay, once we're back in the cabin. Like, Taking her up the stairs to the go door fast, and as soon as she's back, like she's gonna slam open the door, grab her notebook, and start scratching down. Can she? Does she still have any sort of oh. name? Any sort of like? Definitely start okay, with she's, a J. She's gonna be a J. It's going to be like, um, she's gonna write J. Woman, baby? Question mark. House and a fat cow. That's what she's gonna get down. Uh, These just read like crossword questions. I was so ha- happy. What does what blue? What does the forgetting feel like? Does it feel like a block, or does it feel like a curtain? 
Does it feel like a fog in your mind? It just feels like it's going away. It's just, it's just falling out of my head. Like, it's just, like water was, a can was punctured or something. And, and Autumn will like kind of like, like take her face and kind of smooth her hair back a little bit and say, the truth is just too big for your mind. It's okay. We'll get you closer. Once I have proper equipment again, we can begin to study your mind. Put you up to a nice very little to do with equipment. To your brain. Whose face to your just memory. anguished. She doesn't know what she's lost, but she knows something was really good. And, like, she doesn't... F- this is a major breakthrough, Blue. This is good. You're recovering something. It's, it's not going to always be one step forward always. It's a non-linear path. If there are people out there who are looking for me, what if they move on without me? What if they don't want me when I'm... Am I even going to be fixed? I mean, look at me. My entire career is in shatters. But yeah, you gotta keep up your optimism. There's nothing wrong with you, Blue. You just are who you are. And who you are is a miracle. We will smile a little bit at that. Thank you, Autumn. <laughs> what is, what's our room? What's the state of our cabin right now? Any creepy people standing in it? Mitch! <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's brightly lit. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a pretty clean environment. The, the sheets are kind of tossed on the floor. Um, but other than that, everything is the same as, as you know. Anyone want a coffee? I'm going to go run and get a coffee. Uh, Blue has never drank coffee before. She's like, sure, I'll come with you. Yeah, you... Yeah, you hear over the intercoms. Um, uh, we will be touching down <gasps> here shortly. Uh, um, so please uh, ensure that you are back in your seat. Buckled up, um, and we will keep you posted. Excellent! I must have slept longer what than I thought. What the hell is out the window? <sighs> it's it's still dark and stormy, um, so it's kind of hard to see. You do see buildings, but yeah, everything's just foggy. And you see kind of like the the rain pitter patter. Maybe the buildings were just the Italian skyline, European. Mainland. What does the TV show with our like? I switch it. Like Autumn will go sit. And like buckle in, but switch it to that TV where it shows the little plane and the. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh. We're there. there. Blue's gonna quickly write down the altitude, the location, whatever she would have been recording before. <laughs> yeah, we must have gotten a tailwind in the slipstream. Oh, made some good time. It's been seven what hours. The- Does it feel like it's been seven hours? We s- no. we slept a no. little. I mean, maybe we slept longer than we thought. Maybe that that bathroom trip was a dream. I guess maybe I was dreaming. So it wasn't even real. This is what I told all of you. If you sleep through these flights, then it just passes by and you can beat the jet lag on the other side. I'm glad you all took my advice. You, you could be you could be right on this one thing. One thing. That's it. I'll take it. Still counts. disgusting. It's the only thing that makes sense. <sighs> Are we... The pamphlet suggests we sit with our seats in an upright position, tables and trays locked away. Take one of those dinner mints and just suck on them in your mouth and it'll help with the ear popping. <laughs> mm. Hot tips. Who's <laughs> gonna do that? She can just... I'm a bit of a jet setter myself. I used to travel all the times to Prague, to St. Petersburg, and to Reykjavik. Did I tell you about my trip to Reykjavik to the hot springs? I wish you wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you place this, I'm uh, putting candy. my socks on on my shoes since we're going to be landing soon. Yeah. When you place the candy in your mouth, you can almost um, feel lips pressed against you in that same memory. What an interesting flavor! <sighs> Must be one of those European candies. They always talk about European mints as being a little bit better than the American. I think I kissed someone. That old woman? You should write that down, Blue. Was it the old woman, Blue? 
We will write down a kiss one. No, I don't. It wasn't Mr. H, was it? Uh, <laughs> has Mr. Has it Mr. H ever kissed Blue? <laughs> Keep it together. Oh God! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's fine. You're rolling minus two. On oh, that it's party. an eight. Yeah. Not good. Not good. So that puts I'm going down in stability. Oh no, you get it. Oh, strange too much. Yeah, you're going. Oh, I should just y'all. Stop this is a fucking no- nosedive. I'm broken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're gonna take a minus two uh, to your stability. So a Mr. Two hit to that. H broke uh, you. What? What have I done? Oh no! I had Julia's lips in my memory, and then now you brought in Mr. H. Ugh. Yeah. In in your your mind is like because of uh. Aiden. It what wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything. Has now been mushed up with Mr. H. That whole He said like, a name beginning memory. with a J, and H's first name is Joshua. Blue is going to like grab his lapels. Like rush to him, grab his lapels. Why would you say that? It was going to be really she wrote, she wrote down was, as the name. It was, <laughs> it was in your notebook. I was just trying to help answer the question like a crossword puzzle. It's so nice and now it's just <laughs> This isn't what it was like. It was like this, I swear. And now all she can think about is Mr. H kissing her. Yeah, like a memory of it. Yeah, it will okay. not a memory because it, it feels just like the memory that had been slipping through your fingers, but it has come back. But instead of your wife, you see Mr. H. Uh, throughout the whole oh, thing. Oh, naked. Ugh. That's not what it was like. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. No, it wasn't, Mr. H. It wasn't, but now it is. I hate this. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Autumn will pass Blue a pamphlet. Oh, read this. Sit down. Buckle up. Blue. It's gonna be okay. Blue. We're going to land soon. We'll get off this plane. We'll get away from here. We'll get some fresh air. Looking at this pamphlet, uh, opening it up and such, the first image is of Aiden, uh, and it says, Mr. H approaches. Do you flip the page? Yes. And you see Aiden come closer to uh, this blue smear on the pamphlet. Mr. H... I'm going to turn the page. You turn the page. Mr. H thinks Blue is a fat cow. And is this, sorry, Aiden is reading a, a, a blue smear that has that written on it? Yeah, it's yeah. In the pamphlet, you see an image of Aiden, uh, but over it, it always says Mr. H. It's a fat cow. Are there any more pages to turn? Is this the last one? You feel like you shouldn't turn the page. How is Blue reacting to these images? She like is just sitting there silent staring at this page and debating whether she wants to turn it she doesn't she feels she knows she shouldn't but she's just like quietly observing it because at this point you can see like there's like a few dried tear tracks like it's it's just the sheer exhaustion after like a good cry almost like she just looks (sighs) tired Staring at okay. This. I think if Blue isn't like outwardly reacting, Autumn would have sort of checked out to look out the window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking out, um, pitter patter of rain against the window, um, but the cityscape hasn't changed. Still thundering and lightning. Tall buildings stretched out into the sky. Does it look like what one would suspect Italy would look like? No, it doesn't. Would 
Aiden realize this, having traveled before? Because I don't think Autumn would. Autumn has never left the city, really. Can I investigate? Yeah. The vision outside the window. Of course. Because, look, all right, I'm clearly not good with people. This is why I would never got into psychology. I got into engineering. It blew a bat crazy case, but is going to be my ticket to a Pulitzer or something. Um, I don't even know if that's given to scientists. This is Justin speaking, but maybe Aiden thinks he could win a Pulitzer. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or a Hugo. <laughs> something he writes is going to end up in the nonfiction section for sure. A Grammy. <laughs> I'm going to get an, an EGOT. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he has done a lot of traveling. That's true. And I am a jet setter, or at least claim to be. And that would make sense, given the job I had. Yeah. And I have a plus three in reasoning. And so my gut feeling and anything weird, I'm hoping is what I'm going to be able to ask. But we're going to find out. Because what else am I good for? Oh, shit. That's not a good roll, everybody. Uh Um, So I rolled five. So I'm looking out that window. I'm trying to... That doesn't look like Barcelona. They have height restrictions on these buildings to keep that old world feel. Yeah, looking at it, you realize they're not buildings. Um, There's shifting and movement uh, on them and inside them. Um squirming and little fingers reaching out towards the sky um, it's almost like these humanoid things slipping upon each other uh, and being a part of each other uh, stacking on top reaching towards the airplane that's not right I'm losing my mind I mean, I'm looking out the window and seeing something that's impossible. And you've lost control of your body. And I broke in blue. Its, in terms of its reactions to things, as you're staring, like the fear has made has. I can't take my eyes you. off of it. Like I'm watching this, and you're aroused very much aroused. Oh, so I'm right up at the window down. and my breath is like fogging up the window. Yeah, and you feel yourself pressing against this, the side of the wall. This is wrong. I say through a haggard breath. <laughs> And, and upon hearing sort of um, Aiden like whispering against the like pressed face to the window, whispering against like the I'm window. Like, my mouth, my lips are like right up against the and glass. I'm, I'm sort of picturing. But it's like those planes, they have like the double glass, yeah. right? So like there's the outer window and then there's a more plastic inner window. Um, and do each of our individual seats have their own window? So can we all... Uh, no. So how the room is laid out is you have three windows on the side. Uh, you have the bed, uh, and then you have several chairs, but they're, yeah, they're closer to the door. So there's a window seat, a door seat, and like a middle seat against a wall facing the bed on the opposite wall with like maybe a table or something. Okay, so Autumn's going to kind of like crane her neck and kind of lean over and also look out the window as best she can, like around. Because Blue's probably in the middle seat after this, right? Around Aiden, kind of like leaning over Blue towards the window and is also looking out the window and trying to sort of see what Aiden is seeing. Um, Does Autumn kind of perceive the same thing or is she still kind of reading it as buildings? Uh, We'll keep it together. Mm, Let's see. Blue is still just for no You're just seeing the the pamphlet pamphlet open. Yeah, she's not open. (laughs) She's not shut it. She's looking at that page still like, do I dare turn? Uh, and keep it together is with willpower, so I got a 10. 
Maybe it's some altered reality LED metaverse. So, okay, so I'm sorry, I'm just reading this now. So I get a negative one in situations where this condition would be of hindrance to you. Oh, I have to pick one? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what am I I seeing, though? Because that'll change what I pick. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you kind of... The, the plane is shifting to the side, and you're getting a, a lovely view past uh, Aiden. Right, when it comes um, in for a landing, it, like, tilts. Yeah. It pitches or yaws or whatever the term is to the left as it's turning and descending yeah. into the descent pattern. You see um, the leader of your cult riding something at the top of this tower, all these wriggling bodies underneath her. Uh, And for a second, you can almost imagine seeing your own face uh, among the wriggling forms. I become... um, I'm distracted by this. Um, So I get negative two in situations where the condition limits you. So I guess I'm just very interested in what's happening there. So I suppose that would mean, Autumn, you're too distracted looking at your cult leader writhing on this mountain. I would say because I am so distracted by this. So you're not noticing Blue, that you're looking over Blue, who's looking down at But also I'm sort of pressing, like, further towards the window to see better. So I'm sort of jostling up against Aiden in this, and I'm just very distracted. Mm -hmm. So I I also don't notice Aiden's state either. Heavy breathing intensifies. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Blue is just staring at her pamphlet. Her intent is when they land, she's going to turn the page. When they I land. Don't. But she's she's too scared to do that until it happens. Yeah. You hear over the intercom. Thank you for flying. Please leave at your leisure. Uh, and we hope to see you again on the next but flight. It doesn't feel like we landed. <clears throat> Who's gonna flip the page? I mean, I'm looking right out the window. We're still in, we're still in the air, right? Now, looking out the window, you see kind of it, it's nighttime. But you see like a, a guy just kind of like using his hands to motion people to the airplane to like approach it with the two like uh, orange neon. Maybe those dinner mints were edibles. <laughs> That's what it was. Mixed up edibles at the convenience store. So, Blue, you turn the page? Yeah. She has her window closed, so she can't see anything out of it. She's yeah. just been focused on this. You see Blue in bed. And you see that there's a room right next to it. The door is open. And water is flooding your room. Red and thick water. And is this like my bedroom in the apartment? Okay. And I'm just sleeping. Blue is going to fold the pamphlet back so that's the front page of of it. Like it can't, it doesn't close. And she's going to tuck it in with her notebook, and she's going to take that with her. Put it all in her bag. Another clue for Blue. <laughs> Blue's clue. This is just like Blue's clue. Exactly. Clues. Exactly the same. I'm the huge. <laughs> a quick question. If uh, anyone wants I'm... to make like a minor key Blues Clues creepypasta theme, just like email that to feedback at terriblewarriors.com. Tag us on Twitter <laughs> at Dice Warriors. And uh, I will just give you like, I don't know, everything. A complimentary <laughs> pass to everything. Quick question about being broken. I see... It doesn't have an effect of like negative two or negative three to rolls. It, do I just keep all those from the pre- previous level and stay up broken, or is it like you touch broken, GM makes a move, and then you go back to 
unhinged. Yeah, you, you, you're going to stay there, um, but all of those uh, from the past uh, rankings Levels. are added. Oh, they yeah. stack. Huh? Um, I mean, player, player cult question. How do you recover stability or do you, is this just not that kind of game <laughs> it was broken until the end now you, yeah you you basically either see a therapist i mean you take some time otherwise uh you do what broken people do you see down. through the illusion apparently plus one you go a little yeah. crazy uh, and I think that is where we'll end it. As people are shuffling, uh, getting ready to get out of the plane, uh, Blue puts this uh, pamphlet back into her bag. Um, but what the audience sees that Blue doesn't um, is that on the next page is her wife uh, laying in the bathtub, uh, arms <gasps> spread out on either side, pale oh, and still. Wait, that's what Aiden was seeing in the mirror. Wait, is it? <gasps> I would like to point out that the cult leader is also blind. Cult Flight 191 will continue. Stay up to date with what we have planned by following us on Twitter at Dice Warriors. And every Tuesday night, join us on Twitch on the Dungeons and Do-Gooders stream, where we have partnered up with D&DG to present Tabletop Tuesdays. Every week, a new one-shot RPG. On June 21st, we play Monster Hearts with award-winning actress Jordi Tadosi from Degrassi. And if you'd like to play a game with us yourself, well, every month I host a private game for our Patreon sponsors, and there's a chair at that virtual table waiting for you. To find out more about supporting the podcast, visit patreon.com slash terriblewarriors. Cult Divinity Lost is published by Helmgast. Our theme music is by Epic Game Music. All other music is licensed through Epidemic Sound. Our terrible warriors for Cult are Justin Eacock, Ainsley Moores, Kimberly Dewing, and GM Mitch Wallace. And next week on The Terrible Warriors, we finally arrive at our destination. But what is waiting for us when we do? Until we find you again at the Terrible Warrior table, thank you for listening, and be good to each other.